Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be talking about eyeglass sleeves. Yep, eyeglass sleeves. I made this one for my dad. I had made him another one a few years ago, about three years ago. And it's a little beat down and I wanted to hook him up with a few more. Um, so in this project I made him two with the same pattern. I, I am happy to report that these were functional, they look nice, they were to what I had drawn. But with that being said, I'm going to show you guys what it is that I did. Um, the fabric sourcing, um, I talk a little bit about the materials, the thickness, and which are apl applicable for this. Um, if you have a standard sewing machine, these will do just fine. Uh, if you have more heavy duty ones, this will definitely be just fine. It's not going to cause any problem to your machine, I hope. But yeah, we found the lining and that took forever and a day, but we found it. The theme and the vision was more like medieval spirit, sword, handle, um, but you guys let me know if it came to fruition. Um, if you guys do like the video, as always, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you have not already. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Bye! Okay, moving right along. So this is the old one that I made for my dad. So as you can see, it's crackling, kind of has that, <laughs> that dragon scale situation going on. My father's a painter, so that's why there's paint on it. But as you can see, the contrasting color, it was a little more thin because I was trying to make sure that it wasn't too bulky. Um, he did like the ergonomic lip on it, so that way it was like easy in, easy out. But as you can see, I made it pretty much custom to his glasses. He's got a few, but I made sure they fit all of his glasses. Uh, but that's why for this particular pattern that I'm making now, I wanted it to be a little bigger. So quickly moving on to the notebook design. So as you can see, it's medieval sword handles. That was kind of the, the energy that I was going for. Um, I did still st stick with the red um, mink, not mink, but I picked suede, um, a, a vegan suede or faux suede, excuse me. And then I wanted it to be brown as the self. And then I did want that applique either in a darker brown or a black, also with contrasting either little grommets or something painted on to give that illusion uh, and kind of bounce with the red more beautifully. In short though, I ended up going with this one, B. The applique looks more true to design on here, including the little grommets. I painted those myself and I ended up going with black, but I did want it to have a little bit of that lip action, a little asymmetrical and something that looked pretty cool. Okay, so we're back and honestly, I'm going to go ahead and see other designs and see what I come up with. But that for, for the purposes of this video and what I'm letting you guys know at the beginning of the video, this is what we're working with. So I'm going to go pick up some red um, or see if there's other colors, perhaps the black pleather. So I could do maybe black and purple, kind of medieval Maleficent vibes too. And then I'll do like another one for him because he's going to be like, what are you doing, child? <laughs> But I'm sure he's still like it, but just something uh, so he can have for himself, like something casual, something black, sleek. Um, and then I'll do the fun one as well, include that, because I'm making him a couple this time so he can either rotate them or just use the one that he likes the best. So I will leave you guys with this for now, and then we will move on to the next slide. So I ended up in like the fall section, and there's a big sale going on. So there's cute things, but you know trying to buy things that will be useful long term not just for now so uh, there's a lot of cute things here this is really cute this is cute dang it how much is it do i want to know do i want to know it's 80. i don't need it i don't need it i don't need it i do not need it All right, back to the business at hand. Oh, that's cute, but I'm definitely not getting that. <laughs> Okay, so I found the pleather, but now I kind of like this other pleather. It looks way more like leather. Let me show you guys. You see it? 
the backing is like that and it looks really like but I also want to use the one I have so but damn the texture just the texture on it is so so nice so let me see let me sit on it if not I'll let you know but I found the goods okay so this is what we're looking at this is the one that I like. This is the original that I have at home. So you see it's like more smoother, but I'm like, damn. This one looks really cool. This gives it a little more thickness. This one's pretty thin. This one is nice. It could be a contrasting one. I found this black one, which I really like. Is that scale effect for sure. For sure I'm getting some of this. Maybe I can add this one, you see, down here as a support um for the contrast and then i can paint on whatever the embellishments was in the illustration or anything else i'm gonna add so i can actually use this you know what i mean i don't waste that much money so i'm gonna go with this i'm gonna go with this and unsure and i'll find another one so that's where we're at quest continues see this is a good a good vibe something like this yeah i like that Okay, we have like a faux velvet, but we don't have the red. We have pink, which is coming off a little red, but it's not. Hmm. This one may be too stark for it. It's kind of, I mean, it peaks well, but it's, it's just way too bright. The blue one could work though, but I mean, see what I mean? this whole time but I'm like okay <laughs> the faux suede this whole time so look at that it looks a lot nicer oh yeah that's it I'm gonna get that one let me try it out with the other ones but I really really like it especially since I want a little bit to stick out so yes Okie dokie. So now that we're back, I pull out the glasses just to use my dad's old case as a reference. So this one is going to be a little different. I'm just drawing out the baseline, adding seam allowance. I'm adding a quarter out to the sides and half on the top and on the bottom. So I begin kind of just etching out how tall I want it to be. The bottom, I am making it straight. So it looks a little bit different, kind of daggery, kind of sword like. I don't know, but I like the vibe. So I go ahead and add that seam allowance. You can add a little more or less. Honestly, maybe not less, but uh, but you can add a little more. I just wanted it to be as, mm, not as thick as possible, just kind of have a little bit of a tail, but not too much, something to grab onto. I'm gonna go ahead and draw how the lining is gonna be, so that way adding that seam allowance when it folds in. And then this one is for the applique, even though spoiler alert, I had to do this several times, like several times, but I want you guys to really see like the main idea because I enjoy seeing visuals too. <laughs> so we go ahead and cut this out. Uh, spoiler alert, I actually had to recut this applique and redo it several times, but this is just one of them. And I still thought it'd be cool to leave it in here because this would be how you do it if you knew exactly where it goes. But with that being said, we have the self, we cut two, we have the lining, we cut two, and then we have the applique, which is cut two. So this is a beautiful lining. I'll be discussing the materials. This one is the faux suede. I'm really happy with this color. It's a lot deep, deeper than the other red. This brown, I love. The thickness is beautiful. The color is beautiful. It's like a stone brown. So it very much gave me the medieval vibes. This one, to be frank, I didn't end up using, but I still wanted to show it because it could be another possibility for a different project. I don't know, maybe I could have made another one and weathered it down, but I still wanted to go ahead and show you guys it. Um, it is a different type of vegan leather. And as you can see, it is quite thin. This one is thin as well, the black, but as you can see, it has a little more uh, texture to it, a lot more texture to it. And it looks really, really nice. This is the other one that I made uh, for my dad using this material and it turned out great. The lining was a big help because the lining is very sturdy. So it ended up looking nice. The thread. So this one, I, I kind of went on a little bender. Truly, I could have just used two. Uh, this one is really great. I enjoyed this color mixed with the other color that I'm going to show you right now. So it's the Guterman brand and I purchased those two and I also got some colored ones for the lining. This one went perfect with it. You don't have to be as extra as, you know, as I did, but it was for my dad. So I wanted to make it as nice for him as possible. <laughs> um, this metallic black, I really regret getting it. I didn't bother using it because it, it was very wiry, did not like it. 
Um, and those are the threads. So moving on to the actual cutting of this, um, you could do it on the fold or like I did it, which is kind of just back to back. That way there is basically a mirrored version of it. Um, with this one, don't be too concerned, you know, if you cut a little off because you can always fix it. Um, I'll show you guys over here how I actually mess up a little over here, as you can see on the top. And then that's pretty easily like fixable once you clip it like that. And then once you got that figured out, you put them right size together, pin it up and go ahead and start stitching. I will note here, I ended up like back stitching right there. You can leave it a little open or just use, you know, the straight stitch because you guys will see in a little bit, it kind of offers a little bit of resistance, but that's on you. So once that's done, I go ahead and clip the bottom and then cut that edge. So it, when we flip it over, it doesn't show really oddly, even though it's inside, you know, try to do it like as nice as possible. So I just made sure that they went in, they were nice. I had a little bit of room and I was happy with that. Then we move on to the brown one. I'm just gonna call it a brown stone color, but this one, I still love the texture. I went ahead and I literally like just used a pen to mark it up and then I ended up just cutting it. I cut it two again on the fold or just, you know, opposing sides so that way you get two uh, different sides. So right here is where I was fit, like, I literally was like, dang, because um, I hadn't thought of the applique, like the lining, easy peasy, I can fit it in there, but the applique, like I wasn't sure, I t up until this point, I thought I was gonna sew it in on the side seams together and you know, and glue the rest. But no, 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 that ended, that did not end up working, but you guys will see how it did end up working in the end. Um, remember how I said I did this a few times? So here's one of the many times. Um, this is the first time I tried to do it on that edge <laughs> and it was just not like fitting well. It was just not working with me and I had to cut another one. And even with the, the notice of the seam allowance, it was still just not, I just, yeah, no, I was not content. So I ended up taking a little breather and just decided to hand stitch this that I wanted it to look kind of as if there were, um, if someone was selling this at a medieval marketplace way back when <laughs> these would be presented there. One little thing I'm doing here is I'm poking a hole as you guys can see. And then that way it makes it a little easier for me to go in through the other side. I do find with vegan leather that it does crack a lot if you repeat the same motions you know, going in the same hole, but I did end up kind of looping it against each other and going in and out. So that's what gave it kind of this little risen look. And I think it ended up looking quite nice and authentic. Well, as authentic as you can in an imaginary state, but we're going to repeat that on the back. Okay. So a little explanation here. I ended up just putting in the lining, but what I'm doing is I'm subtly stitching a little bit of the inside. The glasses are in there to give it like the full look. I did want to go down here and stitch it, but I'll see because I still want to give it some room to move. So for now, I'm just going to go in and just stitch that so it looks clean. Stitch the these so they line up. Make sure it looks good. And then I'll be back. So I took another stab at it. I had painted it with the gold. It's for vegan leather and leather. It's a leather paint. Um, and I just could not let the applique go. As you guys can see on my left side right there, that's how it was gonna look like with the paint. And I'm like, I can't, I need to figure out a way to mold this and make this come to life. So I ended up using that gold that was existing there to my advantage. Um, so what I ended up doing is just literally like going on and, and marking it. So I marked it down um, and uh, this is tissue paper. So I ended up just thinking, I was like, okay, maybe if I can just kind of mold it on itself, that way I can go ahead and mark it. And then maybe that'll give me a better visual, especially because it's see-through, you know what I mean? So I ended up working pretty well, but I will also say that vegan leather or pleather the thinner it gets, the more it is uh, susceptible to stretching out. And that will come into play right after this because I'm gonna pin these two together and it was two, so they were pretty lightweight. So, you know, tissue paper is super lightweight, but I went ahead and I pinned that to the black bit of leather and then I cut it out. So then uh, I left the cutout portion too, because uh, as you guys can see, uh, your girl is a, uh, you know, struggle busting a little bit, but um, I left it because it's good to know. Like sometimes, you know, you see things like that are miraculously beautiful and there are some hills to, you know, go over. So I left this so you guys can go ahead and see. Um, how I kind of move the scissors around and try to get as close to it as possible. But my main concern was just getting them equal. So as you can see right there, I took it off and there's a little bit that was left over. 
but that's okay because then we can isolate later and because i told you that it stretches out a bit this is where it's going to come into play and you'll see you'll just see you'll see how it is you'll see how it how it ends up working out in our favor but they're at least one side and the other side so we're good <laughs> Now, this is what I was telling you guys that it stretches out a little bit. Okay, fine. That still worked to our advantage. And that way you guys can do this on purpose if you like the look of it. So I was measuring. I'm like, okay, this is enough. I cut it out. I literally cut it out. I was literally right now. I'm like, <laughs> but I, I was like, you know what? Let's just do this where we can kind of make it uh, go on itself or let's make a little change. Cool. So, and I did end up doing that. I modified it a little bit and then I used some E6000 and I pasted it. I glued it upon itself. And it ended up looking really tight. Tell me that doesn't look like it was made somewhere. Some leathersmith somewhere in ye old era made it. So um, I ended up doing it on both sides and they look really cool. 110% that this was a happy accident. So I went ahead and I placed it over there. So it gave me a little more room if it does end up being a little more uh, flexible, let's say, or it stretches out. Uh, but then at that point, I was like, okay, I'm going to use that gold to my advantage and I'm going to paint it. So I painted it. I, this is like the third coat. I ended up doing like four to five coats. And then while that dried, I used the same paint. So that's it. And then I used my little brush. And then I went ahead and this is honestly the, the best part, the most fun part for me, because I was really excited to do the little detailing on it. So as you guys can see, just little dots, boom, boom. I uh, gave it a little room uh, in between and I wasn't too fussy. It, some of them ended up being a little bigger than the others, as you guys can see but I didn't want to go too nuts on it and be hard on myself because it still gave that effect. So overall, 10 out of 10. So this is how it looks like. I ended up getting the sides. The inside, I mean, you know, as you can see, it's fine. I didn't want to waste more paint on that. The corners, I just cleaned up on the sides and the side seams to make sure that that's even. And then I went ahead and I used this method. So I used a Q-tip, which I definitely recommend. So this is the E6000. Um, I also recommend buying the little tubes because that way if one, you, you could just use them, you know what I mean? Instead of using the big old one, but I don't know, maybe you like that. So never mind. Um, but I ended up doing that with the Q-tip and it worked out pretty well then I molded it onto it um, trying not to uh, move it around so much I mean for me there was a little bit of glue that was spilled over there and I do try to clean it up in a little bit but that that is a thing that happened for me so right here I use that stretchiness to my advantage to mold it onto it so as you can see I'm pressing it I'm moving it and that way just applying that pressure in order for it to be as as perfect as possible so you guys can see the little slow-mo that I added here. I really like it, just that contrast, chef's kiss. So I used the clean side of that Q-tip and I went ahead and I just cleaned up as much as the glue as possible, provided a little more uh, you know, support on that. And then over here, the little flap, I ended up using the glue once again with the Q-tip and then I prefer adding it to uh, the actual pleather as opposed to the back of the black one. So with that being said, I let it sit underneath my sewing machine <laughs> and this is how it looks. Tell me that doesn't look good. I'm so excited. It came out really nice. It looks medievally to me um, and it, it obviously got flat because I put it under there. So this machine is roughly 22 pounds. It's a 1957 uh, Singer and that was enough time to make it look good. So right here's the finished results. The black one I made a little smaller and I added the detailing that was a little different. I still uh, attached it at the seams um, and it fit the glasses. So overall, I'm really happy guys. If you guys enjoy this video, thank you so much. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you have it. Thanks for sticking around. Bye. Enjoy the sleeves if you make them. See ya.